congratulations. We are in the 30th day of our journey where we are completing and concluding the third quarter. And uh, from here, we're going to go to the fourth and final quarter. And since we were focusing on refining our, our midot, our characteristics, our attributes, then, of course, we have to finish this 10 days with one of the most, if not the most important, uh, midah, which, of course, is the midah of anava, of being humble. If a person is able to reach to the midah of anava, then from there, the way to the top is very, very fast. There are many great sages and uh, prophets and leaders in our past. And interestingly, each and every one of them got a title. Avraham got the title Avinu, our father. He is the father. That's, that's his name. Avram. Av means a father and Ram, great. As Shem told him, you'll be Av Hamon Goim, the father of many nations. So he got the, name, the, the title of Ram Avinu. Then came Yosef. Yosef was uh, able to fight the Brit. He got the title, Yosef Hatzadik. And then many got titles. Aaron, HaKohen, the first Kohen Gadol. Shmuel got the title Hanavi, Shmuel Hanavi, David HaMelech. Many different great sages and leaders got titles. Moshe, on the other hand, who was a king, should have been called Moshe HaMelech. Also, he was the, the highest of all prophets. He should have been called Moshe Hanavi. But nevertheless, he got a, a most special title, Moshe Rabbeinu. Rabbeinu means our teacher. Why? Not only because he gave us the Torah, not only because he's a great prophet, not only because he was able to reach to high levels, because he was able to conquer the most powerful Midah, and he was humble. Vaishaya Anav Mikol. He reached to the highest level of Anava. Therefore, he was able to reach the highest level in spirituality in a body, the 50th gate. And needless to say, by him and through him, he was able to get, get the, receive the Torah, give us over the Torah. Not only that he taught us the Torah, but he's the living example how a man can be great in all aspects, reach to the highest of all levels, and still be humble. So he got the title Rabbeinu, a teacher. So I will take from that that the main teaching that Moshe Rabbeinu gives us is not the Torah per se, because we had many great sages that taught us the Torah. But he taught us, or comes to teach us, how you can be great, and on the other hand also uh, uh, failures at the same time, but still be extremely humble. Moshe Rabbeinu had not one sin. People think that he had one sin. He has many sins. First of all, he was able to do tshuva. More than that, he was able to accept the punishment without arguments. Did you hear any argument of Moshe Rabbeinu ever in the Torah? Last week, we read that Moshe Rabbeinu was told by the master of the universe, go up to the mountain and look at the land of Israel. Sorry, you're not going in. Wouldn't you think that Moshe Rabbeinu would be like, with all due respect, my master, I have served you loyally for 40 years. I did anything you said. I tolerated this nation. I did this and I did that. Don't you think that you, you can give me some mercy? Don't you think I deserve to come in? He didn't argue. He didn't uh, try to plea his case. He accepted. But that's not necessarily what brings him to greatness. The greatness that he reached is the level of Anava, and he knew who he was. Don't think for one second that he was walking like this, like some uh, shmate. He knew he's Moshe Rabbeinu. He knew when he looked in the mirror that he is the only human being that was, will ever be, will talk directly to the Kadosh Baruch Hu without any mechitzot, and any per partitions. Receiving a prophecy in a level that we can't even fathom. He knew exactly who he was. He went up to the mountain three times he, with his body into Shemaim. He went into Paro. Who was able to, to deal with Paro? So he knew exactly who he was. But ever, nevertheless, he also knew exactly that this was only coming from the Kadosh Bukho. The secret to his Midat Anava is that he knew it's coming from Hashem. By saying that if Hashem decides for me not to be great, I'm back to being a simple person like you and me. 
So he knew that it's all the Kadosh Baruch He didn't give any credit to himself. Now where do you see greatness in Moshe Rabbeinu? I mean, we can sit here now for three days and say, see how great he was. But the thing that shocks me is the whole story with Korach. Because Moshe was the king. And everything that he did was 100% by the word of God. He didn't do anything by himself. And then comes Korach, insults him in public, does a whole campaign against him. People think it was just some argument around the tent. Korach made a campaign. Exactly like we see now that presidents do a campaign, Korach made a campaign. He went with his party from one tent, from one uh, camp, and going a very strong campaign against Moshe Rabbeinu. It wasn't something that took a day or two. And if there was social media at the time, then Korach will bombard social media with stories. And then, of course, he comes and uh, 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 tax Moshe Rabbeinu, slanders him, argues with him. And what do you think? You think Moshe Rabbeinu did anything? Moshe Rabbeinu could have his head beheaded within a second. And when he comes to attack Moshe Rabbeinu, the Torah says, Vayipol al panav vayev. Moshe fell on his face and he started crying. Not because he was a, a wimp, because he had in his mind, maybe Koch is right. Maybe I did something wrong. And when it says, Vayipol al panav, he did tshuva. Vayev, he cried. He looked deep down inside of him to do tshuva. He could have uh, uh, said to himself, Oh, I'm great, I'm Moshe Rabbeinu. Uh, I go up first class, VIP to Shemaim. I have a problem. I have sins. I need to do tshuva. But you see that in that situation, he did not take his power and abuse it. Rather, he was saying, Maybe this guy is right. Maybe I need to do tshuva. Maybe there's something inside of me that I didn't clean yet. That's why he says, Vayev, he, he cried, he looked inside to see maybe I did something wrong. If Moshe Rabbeinu was able to be so humble and being so great at the same time, wouldn't you think that we are not even close to his little toenail and we have arrogance and ego and pride? It should be the complete opposite. He should have arrogance and ego. He's really great. I'm not really great. What am I? I'm just another individual that tries to, uh, to run my life and I suffer from an ego that is out of control. So really what we want to focus on is when I want to get closer to the Kadosh Baruch Hu, to the master of the universe, I have to understand a few things. A, that I'm a, a nothing in front of the Kadosh Baruch Hu. Like Avraham Avinu says, Ani afar va'efes, va'afar va'efer. I'm ashes and dust. I have to understand that I'm a nothing compared to the Kadosh Baruch Hu. Now, if I'm a nothing compared to the Kadosh Baruch Hu, then I have to have this attitude that I'm a nothing compared to anybody else in front of me. Even if I have some good qualities, and even if I'm great and successful, I'm still a nothing in front of anybody. Because if a Kadosh Baruch Hu goes like this, I cease to exist. The next thing I need to understand is that everything that happens in my life, good or bad, is only because of, because of Hashem. So any achievement that I got, anything that I was able to conquer, achieve, do, is only in the grace of Hashem. If Hashem would not allow me to do it, I would be like a rock. I would not even move. I have to attribute all my success, all my achievements to the Kadosh Baruch Hu. If I was able to figure out some difficult halakha from a very difficult Gemara, it's only because the Kadosh Baruch Hu shined the way to me. If I was able to learn a language, to do a degree, whatever it is, because Hashem allowed me to be able to reach that. It has nothing to do with me. I am literally a piece of body. I'm a flesh and bones and blood, and that's what I am. I'm, a, I'm literally a lump of, of fat and meat, and that's what I am. Everything that happens in my life is because the Kadosh Baruch Hu is allowing it to happen. And the third of most, and the third of all is to understand that even though I'm great and I have great qualities and I achieve a lot of things in my life, if everything that was given to me would be given to somebody else, there's a great chance it would do much better. Now when I bring myself to a level of understanding that I need to be humble, that I'm not that great, that's when I really can start serving Hashem. And what I would suggest for you to do once a day after you do your Yudbudidut and many other things, is go and stand in front of a mirror and look in the mirror 
for two seconds, three seconds, maybe a minute, and tell yourself you're not that great. Tell yourself that once a day, it will put things in perspective, that you're not that great. Other people have feelings, other people have thoughts, other people have opinions, other people are much more successful than you, by the way, smarter than you, stronger than you, have more achievements than you, able to do much more than you. And it's not to put you down, it's you put you in perspective that if I think I'm better than everybody, what am I thinking of Hashem? Maybe, you know, some people have a complex. They think, they think they're as great as God. And some of them think they are a God. I mean, Paro thought he was a God. Nebuchadnezzar thought he's a God. Nimrod thought he's a God. And the list goes on and on. But Hitler, Imach Shimov, Zichod didn't think he's a God. And Haman and many others. And even our generation, we have many people, they have a God complex. They think they're God. And they can do whatever they want. Chas v'shalom, you should not cross a, a line that you have any comparison that you think for one second that I can stand in front of the Kadosh Bechu. So the more humble I am, the more closer I get to the Kadosh Bechu. I always have the thought in my mind that I'm, I have good qualities, there's nothing wrong. I need to know what my good qualities, but not for one second to think that anything is done in the power of my own. I am 100% annulled in front of Hashem, and if Hashem wants me not to move right now, then I'm going to be still like a rock. So, we have to understand that the, the greater I want to achieve, achieve or to, the greatness that I want to grow, is only through the midah of anava, of being humble. And the more humble you are, the more successful Hashem is going to make you. Not successful necessarily in business, successful in your studies, successful in your tshuva, Successful in raising your kids. Successful in anything that you, that you do. This is the bracha that Hashem gives you. Anything that you're going to do, you'll be successful. But for that, you need to humble yourself. Like the Ramban says in the letter that we read every day, make yourself humble. Kadosh Baruch will make you great. If you try to make yourself great, then the Kadosh Baruch will crush you. Be'apo mashpil geim. Be'apo, with his nose, Hashem doesn't have a nose, but that uh, nose in Hebrew is af. Af is also in, uh, in uh, Hebrew, anger. Kadosh Baruch doesn't like arrogant people. So you get him angry, he will crush you. So the practice, what you want to do from now on, is like I told you, everything that happens in your life is because of the Kadosh Baruch Hu. You are not that great. Other people are greater than you. And take a moment in your life to look in the mirror for a few seconds, Look straight at yourself and tell yourself, you're not that great.